Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the uh, home-based episode of the Custom Apparel Startups podcast. My name is Mark Stevenson. And this is Mark Vila. And today, we've got a great episode for you. We're going to talk about uh, the sublimation business uh, with Jim. Now that's the title of the episode we have here yeah. because um, because, there, doing, because there's only one there's, there's only, only one gym that you talk the sublimation business with and uh, oh. and it's not we're not attempting to sell or buy sublimation from him but this is Jim Francis from bestblanks.com and Jim is going to help um, all of us both Mark and I and you out there listening better understand the sublimation business as a whole. So, um, Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. A pleasure yeah. to be here. I think that's, we have a lot of good information to uh, share today. That's not that's not hard to remember. Um, yeah, Mark and Mark. So, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little a little a little about Jim. He's been uh, getting people started in the uh, custom T-shirt promotional product business um, for about 150 years, <laughs> and uh, and we've asked him to be on the podcast for two reasons, and that. That, you know, Mark and I, we, um, we know a lot about embroidery. We know everything about DTG and white toner printing and spangles and rhinestones, um, vinyl. Most of that's just Mark Vila, but we do know <laughs> a lot about that technology. But really, you know, um, sublimation is a whole uh, in our knowledge. Like we haven't done that much except with the I-550. You know, we don't have a lot of years of experience in doing sublimation. And um, the second reason is um, because it's really a great technology to get started because it's really inexpensive um, if you're doing it right compared to other equipment that you can get from Cold Essie. And also, um, we just want to brag because now that bestblanks.com is part of the um, Cold Essie family, you know, we've got tons uh, more stuff uh, to talk about and uh, some really great people to, to talk with about. So yeah, um, that's why Jim's on the episode. Yeah, and, and before we get to Jim, another reason why uh, we're on, we brought him on, is that so Mark and I are doing this from our homes, um, and and maybe we'll just continuously do it like this forever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'll be, I mean, it's maybe kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Um, there's a lot more elbow room over yes. here. And, but Jim is actually, uh, he's actually at the Baseball Hall of Fame. I am. <laughs> I am. Episode. Behind me is my uh, my lifelong career as a baseball father. Oh yeah. yeah, I I love it. I think it's great. It's great to have some things to be passionate about. It's much more interesting. Actually, up here, if you notice, there is some Christmas decor, um, and uh, this whole cabinet normally would be filled with that as well. But some of it's actually already moving out into the. Um, staging area of the house because I don't have, I don't have baseball memorabilia, but I've got tons of holiday and uh, uh, things, decorations. He, dude, Mark Vila has actually won some international awards for the most <laughs> holiday decor decorations in the smallest spaces. <laughs> yeah. so, it could be true. It's the Jersey true. award for den densely populated decorations. That's yeah, where you if go. If you do a, a Halloween episode, um, which Mark's been really pushing me to do, um, a Halloween themed episode, then I'll give you a tour of my Halloween room here. So why? Well, I, I know. Um. Anyway, so it's pretty exciting. All right, <laughs> let's get to business. Um. Sure. Jim, thank you so much for coming on again. I know we're going to learn a lot today, and so one thing to start with, I think, is really just the basics, right? Somebody listening to this um, has may has maybe heard the word sublimation before, not sure what it means. Um, other people might know sublimation from the scientific word because maybe they learned it in school, but they don't they don't know how that applies to actual T-shirts or or other substrates. Um, and others have never heard it at all. So let's bring it all the way. Let's start all the way at the bottom, and just say work our way up. What is sublimation? Give us a minute or two on on just okay. what it is. Sublimation uh, is a uh, direct uh, printing method where you have uh, special sublimation inks and special paper, and you're going to print onto uh, substrates, textiles that are either made of 100% polyester or coated with polyester. It's print on demand. So if you are uh, a decorator currently and you're doing something like transfers or you're doing 
embroidery, things like that, uh, you want to get into sublimation because right off the bat, it's going to give you a, a really super high quality result and open the doors for many, many other products that are available in the sublimation field. You know, people come in and they talk to me and they say, well, what can I do? I want to do everything. I say, you sure about that? Because there's quite a bit to do, you know? So the technology, the technology is really no different than probably most, uh, uh, you know, technology out there. It requires heat. It requires pressure. It requires time. And that's all done through a heat press. So the, the process works really clean. And you can be printing commercial quality uh, products on the first day. Yeah. And that's what excites a lot of people, you know. And because the quality is so high, what happens is you have the ability to uh, garner a market that you, maybe you didn't have previously if you were doing regular transfers. Uh, now with sublimation, you're working with better quality garments, better quality substrates, and uh, that really translates to generating more income yeah. for yourself. I think that one of the things that I, I love about sublimated prints, and if you don't know what those are, if you know, you've definitely seen them. If you are, if you're in a t-shirt shop or a, uh, a big brand or retail shop and you walk up to a uh, polyester garment that's got a print on it and you touch it and all you feel is shirt, then that was sublimated. Right. You know, it's got, it's got no feel whatsoever. It's pretty incredible because people don't realize how much uh, is out, out there that is already sublimated, you know. And if you understand the process, the actual, you know, the technology behind it, the inks, when you heat up sublimation inks, there's a chemical reaction. They turn into a gas and they actually die into the fibers of the garment. And the reason... Uh, Polyester works so well is because it's a man-made product. It's refined. Unlike cotton, which is a very organic product, it doesn't grab the inks. The inks don't uh, bond as well with cotton. So that's why uh, polyester is really required. And it's just a, a process that really gives you a, a long-lasting result. They're not, it's not going to fade. It's not going to become undone in the wash. So uh, that's why people really uh, respond to it. You look around, you see there's a lot of stuff out there like that. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you go throughout your house right now, there, there's a pretty strong chance you, um, you're not going to be in a room with something that's been sublimated as yeah. well. So um, you figure this is, this is extremely popular for, um, it's of course apparel that we mentioned it. So right. you, probably, um, you probably have scarves or gloves or socks or a hat or a t-shirt or something like that that's been sublimated. Um, some of these things are actually just sublimated at a factory. So they, they take rolls of fabric and they sublimate the design onto a white piece of fabric. And then that goes to another factory where they make shirts and hats or curtains, you know, everything. Um, and then of course, if you go into, if you have a bunch of mugs, any mug that's white, that's been through the dishwasher a hundred times and still looks pretty good. Um, a decade that later, was it's probably a sublimated mug. So I, I have um, a cabinet full of them. Yeah, I'm sure you <laughs> a shock, a, a shock. <laughs> but uh, chances are you have it. So this is technology that's been around um, for a pretty long time. Um, I think I did some research um, on the sublimation process and the first printing. Um, I don't remember the guy's name anymore, but it was done in France in like the 70s or 60s. So this technology is like I, I don't know. 50, 60 plus years old. Sure. Um, so it's been around for a while. It's been through generations of refinement. So um, it's very mature product. Yeah. And it, it, it's kind of, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but it's kind of technically it's the same process, whether you're working on a big roll to roll printer um, and when you're doing kind of aftermarket stuff like Best Blanks and Cold Essie customers normally, they're buying finished goods. Correct. And they're decorating those. Where, you know, most of the fabric, even if you buy curtains, if they're a synthetic, then they're probably been sublimated, you know. Um, and if you see the all over prints for shirts, those are done with sublimation too? Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's okay. usually done in a wide format application. You know, you usually have somebody with a wide format printer. They're printing out on 24 inch rolls or 44 inch rolls. And you have to have a press that will do that. 
as well. Right. You know, you have to print what you, you have to be able to press what you print. So the yeah. press at that point and the printer come hand in hand. But that's how you accomplish a lot of those uh, all in, uh, you know, print all over type of garments and stuff. So right. it's really uh, a lot of people like to do that. But once they find out, you know, what's involved, maybe they can't put that type of equipment into a home based right. business. But there, yeah. are, there are other options, you know. You know, one of the things that I, I tell people and uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty excited about it is that the results that you get, it doesn't matter if you're home-based or you're some big industrial type of sublimation uh, service bureau, you know, printing for uh, Walmart or, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. The process is the same. The inks are the same. The paper is the same. Heat, time, temperature pressure it's all the same and in the end you even with a home-based business you're going to produce the same level of quality that you would buy these larger companies yeah yeah the the uh, printer that the printers that you offer on best blanks that are offered on bestblanks.com right. um that brand that same name brand is is they make massive commercial equipment does i mean things that cost more than than most people's houses you know, um, so, right. so, but they also make compact equipment, which is, um, within the same affordability as all the equipment in the cold SE family line of products that most anybody can afford and you can get in the business, you know, for, for not that much money, especially if you're financing. Yeah. So, so go ahead, Mark. Sorry. I, I just wanted to draw a line here while I'm, while I'm thinking about it is because the question when I talk to, to people occasionally about sublimation is, um, they want to do all over printing and, um, and that's exclusively cut and sew. So you're going to print on a roll of fabric. You're going to cut out a, a pattern of a t-shirt and then you're going to sew it together. It's possible, but it's not very, um, that's not a startup friendly activity. You know, that's right. a, you're, that's commercial production. You're running and a, uh, you're running a sewing operation um, at that point. So what we're talking about is kind of the aftermarket decoration of completed apparel and stuff. Right. right. There's, there's, a, there's a world of uh, sublimation in, uh, on the desktop for, you know, platform. Yeah. There, are a lot, there are printers out there, you know, of course, with Best Blanks, we offer the uh, Sawgrass Virtuoso printers. They have two printers. Uh, one is a small desktop. It's called the SG500. It is essentially a letter and legal size uh, paper that you can print for that. A lot of people like that printer when they're doing small items. You know, they're doing mugs, they're doing keychains, they're doing, uh, you know, smaller plaques, things like that. Uh, what happens is uh, you don't need a bigger printer and you buy a, you have a press, press that works with that. Uh, if you have a uh, inkling to get into garments, then what happens is most people go into the larger uh, printer that Sawgrass makes, which is the SG-1000. This printer will print everything from eight and a half by 11 all the way up to 11 by 17 transfer paper right out of the box. Yeah. And they also have a bypass tray that allows you to print up to 13 by 19. So with a 13 by 19 bypass tray, you can use a 16 by 20 press and get a pretty big, big image on your shirt. So it's, that's a really good, uh, application if you're going to go into uh, uh, you know t-shirts garments tote bags things like that so that works good so there's a lot of choice there for uh, a desktop application and a yeah. desktop application of course you know a lot of our customers work from home they can't have big equipment there or they might have a kiosk or they might have a small booth in a uh, you know a flea market things like that so these type of uh, platforms these smaller printers work perfectly in that type of environment. Yeah, I, I think one of the most attractive things about it and, and why a lot of people, like the sublimation business is huge, right? Is because yeah. you can almost get started kind of at craft equipment prices and get professional results. Like what's the, what's the range of, of what we're talking about here to you're, do? You're talking about uh, with a startup printer from uh, Sawgrass, that printer will start at about $5.99. Okay. And, from there, you will have, you know, paper is relatively inexpensive. Probably the least expensive of all the paper when you consider laser paper and transfer paper. Usually a, a pack of paper would be about $17 for uh, 100 sheets. So you're talking $1.70. Yeah. 
-hmm. And the cost of the ink, you know, a lot of people always ask, and I'm sure you've heard it too, Mark. uh, They always ask, well, how many shirts can I do with this? Or how many mugs can I make with a set of inks? You know, and my canned answer is always, your mileage may vary, you know? Yeah. It really has to do with, you know, your artwork and, uh, you know, what you're printing, your colors, your resolution, things like that. But uh, I always tell them, you know, the most important thing you want to think about is not so much how much can I do, but how much is it going to cost me to do what I do? And once you have those numbers nailed down, the cost of your paper, the cost of your ink, uh, the cost of your substrate, those are things that will allow you to then, you know, put your products out there to market uh, and make a profit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's really good. Give you an example. Uh, if you're running a SG500, you're probably looking at about a, a penny a square inch for ink. Okay. So that's, that's a good that's way to think about it. Really, really inexpensive. So uh, you know, if you were putting together, a, you know, a, a piece of uh, a, a t-shirt uh, on an eight and a half by eleven, you know, you would be talking about with ink and stuff, probably three dollars. You yeah. know, to get something, you know, on the on the shirt. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty affordable. And uh, when, you, when you factor in the quality that you're going to put out there to a customer, you know, you can really charge, uh, you know, a, a reasonable competitive price. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just looking, um, checking on the Best Blanks website since you brought up about that. So there's, there's a package available online, like a business starter kit. It looks like here, and I'm seeing um, it includes a heat press, a printer. It looks like there's some T-shirts and some other items in there. And we, uh, Best Blanks just added some financing information onto the site, okay. and it says you can finance this for $107, as low as $107 a month. So for basically 100 bucks a month, not only are you in business, but you've got some things to sell already. Right, Mark. Mark, let's let's not exaggerate. Let's say $110 yeah. a month. Okay. <laughs> you know. But but so so that's really that's really great. So the there's a wide range. Custom apparel in particular is just like this um, incredibly rich and varied business. There are tons of ways to get great quality prints, um, to do quality embroidery. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can uh, buy blank and, and you can resell, and they all kind of have their place. And one place, if you're a cold Essay customer and you haven't looked at sublimation, you know, I think especially if you're doing embroidery right now and you want to um, kind of step your toe into custom t-shirts or you want to look at doing, you know, some of the, we'll ask Jim about hot products that are selling in sublimation in a minute. But if you're, if you want to like fill out your business a little bit, then, you know, hundred or 200 bucks a month to do really great quality custom shirts is it's a deal. I mean, it's a great way to get started. It really is. You know, one of the things that I find with really experienced decorators, decorators who already have uh, an array of technology uh, in place that they're printing print on demand, uh, they bring sublimation in there and their creativity just opens up because you can do a lot of things with uh, sublimation. There are vinyls that you can sublimate on. So if you're doing vinyls uh, and you decide to put an image on that and then apply it to a shirt, you you have extra value there in that garment. I know customers that actually blend together embroidery and sublimation. So all these different technologies, you know, they somehow, you know, these decorators, these business owners, they get so creative and they bring all this together and they make a a product that's really unique to them. And that's really, uh, you know, what makes them stand alone, you know, apart so, from the rest. I'll yeah. make another pitch here is if, um, what does the, um, the highest end sublimation package on Best Blank's site? What, what, what does a bundle look like? Well, a bundle would be, if you wanted to put together something, you would go, let's say we talked about the SG-1000. That's the larger of the desktop printers. Yep. Okay. That printer would run uh, $15.99. That includes inks. Uh, right. Then what we would do is we want we would want to put a, a heat press together with that. Now, typically with sublimation, it's always the, the recommendation that you want to use a swing away press whenever possible. Okay. okay? The reason is, is because when you're sublimating, you want to make sure you have equal pressure coming down on that substrate, front to back, left to right. And it, it just gives you a much more uh, reliable press. 
pressing on the shirt. Right. So you want to do something like that. Now, there are two presses that always come to mind. Everybody knows them. You have the George Knight DK20S Swing Away. This is a, a really good quality press. It's been on the market. It's been around for how many years? I can't even yeah. tell you. 20 years, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And the other one that a lot of people really love is the uh, Stahl's Fusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a great press. So, you know, you're talking about, you know, $1,512 versus $2,250. So whatever your budget, you know, can stand, yeah. one yeah. of those presses would work out really, really well. And then of course there are accessories. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you have, you know, heat tape, small priced items. You want to make sure you have the right paper for the products that you're going to make. And uh, of course, in the end, <laughs> you want to have blanks. Right. You know, you want to know what you want to buy. Do you want to work with hard substrates? Do you want to work with uh, garments, textiles? You know, right now, uh, our textile brand vapor apparel is really, it's so popular right now. Yeah. And uh, we can't get enough of it. You know, people just right. scoop up everything that you have. But it's so, such a good quality garment made so well that whatever you produce looks great. Looks great. So yeah, I, I just, just want to some of that this this week. I just I just went to the warehouse and um, I pretty much put my hands on almost every piece of vapor apparel that's available. And there's a lot of really interesting and cool things there. And there's uh, a lot more on order and, and coming in apparently too. So it's yeah. an expanding line. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so let me do let me do my commercial here for those of us that. Um, those of you who have been cold SE customers, you know, for the past 10 or 15 years or so, um, and you've got a DTG printer, an M2 or a Viper 2 or a Viper or one of the G4s, um, you know, there, um, there's been a lot of efforts to perfect direct garment printing onto polyester, you know, and most DTG printers do a pretty good job, do a pretty good job on white, you know, on white polyester. Um, but that's really sublimation's sweet spot. So it, it'd be fine if, because um, it'd be fine if you do 95% of your business is in the cotton that DTG's sweet spot is in, you know, but if you're going to do sublimated apparel, you know, if you're going to do um, polyester, like light colored polyesters, you should really consider just adding a technology that's made from the ground up to do that. Because that's, that's what sublimation is for. So yeah, I mean, don't stop printing with DTG at all. But man, if you've got a customer or regular business in this space, from what Jim said, you can, you can get professional in a very short period of time for a very small amount of money and do kind of that poly the way it's supposed to be printed. There, there's something interesting about that too, you know, um, because what, what often what often happens especially when you're small in the business is you buy a piece of equipment that is um that is all of the equipment that that we sell and best banks uh, best blanks and coleman and company cold Essie, all across the board and all our brands all the equipment's really versatile it can all of it can do a lot right um none of it can do everything and what what happens is folks get trapped into the they have this one piece of equipment and they want to make it work for everything. Right. And there's a different, there's a couple of difference in, in something being able to do something and something being specialized to do something. Right. So, and if you, whatever, a couple analogies, you know, across the board, if you're into, um, I do home repairs and fixing and building things. I like that. I've, I have like six different types of saws. Why? Right. My, my <laughs> one, my one hand table saw theoretically could have done my floors and could have helped build the table I built. All of it could have been done with that hand saw. But then I have a table saw as well because that was much easier and much better for doing other things. So, so why anyone who builds knows that you've got, you know, bunch of different types of, of hand tools, bunch of different types of hammers, different types of screwdrivers, because even though there are universal ones, there are ones that are better at doing it than others. And yeah. that investment of money saves you a ton of time, delivers you a better product. But, um, I'll, cooking is the same way. How many, if someone's into baking, cooking, how many different pots and pans and sheets and do you have for cooking? 
And I mean, that, you could just have two. <laughs> those are those are great analogies. It is like you know when you when you get started in cooking or in um, home repair or car repair, whatever it is. Generally, you start with like some very simple tools. Like you start with one and you use it until you absolutely have to buy something else. And uh, you can kind of look at you know you've you've got an embroidery machine from us. You've got a DTG printer. You've got a bling machine you know, you've got a cutter, what, whatever it is, you can kind of look at this like, this is a great way to expand your tool set. Right. Or if you're just, if you just found us and you've got, you know, 500 or a thousand dollars to spend and you really want to start in the business, you know, cold SE, on the cold SE side, we don't have that much to talk about. But on the best blank side, man, you've got some real options that you could, you could start a business in the next few days. You know, w- one of the things, uh, I want to mention about these printers, these Sawgrass printers, the Virtuoso. Uh, these are the only desktop printers on the market that are specifically designed for sublimation. You know, there, there are a lot of people out there that they, they look for options. They look for other things, and they, they try to find printers that they can just take an office, a home office printer, you know, if it's, you know, a, another brand. Yeah. They want to find some... Uh, maybe some sublimation inks on Amazon or eBay. They slap them together. And what happens is they don't get the same results. You know, it's a struggle. The colors aren't there. The printers aren't made for those type of inks. And there's no support. You know, when you kind of put something together like that with these uh, virtuoso printers, these are specific, specifically designed. The print engines have all been rebuilt. These printers are part of the uh, the Rico family that were specifically designed by uh, them for uh, sawgrass to their specific, uh, you know, requirements. And that together with the inks, they've created a new ink formula. Uh, they went from a high definition definition ink now to an ultra high definition ink. So they've really spent a lot of time. They have a lot of years invested in providing a very, very high quality sublimation uh, platform that will give you super, super results, you know, great products to work with. So it, it's something to really, uh, you know, appreciate, you know, if you want to get into the market. Yeah, that's great. And, and like you said, you know, you're, you're working when you work with good equipment, when you have good tools, you get good results. Um, Mark, uh, had mentioned something earlier and I made a note so I wouldn't forget to do this because there are a couple and you and both of you mentioned something which which comes together so um, we have customers out there listening who do embroidery right now right you have an Avance embroidery machine or maybe some other brand of embroidery machine and that's what you're doing and you're considering bringing t-shirts on board now you had mentioned that um, customers can take uh, their embroidery and use sublimation with it and specifically to, you know, kind of reiterate that the thread, embroidery thread, white embroidery thread is made, is polyester. If you're buying polyester embroidery thread, um, assuming so on Coleman and Company, all of our threads polyester. So because the thread is polyester, naturally um, it can accept sublimation dye. So you can take um, a design that you design that's an all white design that you've embroidered and sublimate on top of it to add color to it. So you can do something that you actually, you can achieve some sort of level of detail that you couldn't with your embroidery. Uh, Another thing that is, and if you go to the mall or something like that now, if you look around, you'll notice, go to a store that sells um, fashion caps. And one of the things that they will do is they will take a white piece of material and they will sublimate a logo or a design onto this and then like a patch, they will, um, if you know embroidery, they will do an applique of that onto a hat typically is very common. And this is another way to decorate a cap that combines embroidery and printing together. Uh, another thing is you might see like a red cap with a green square. It looks like it's a green patch on it that's been printed on. Chances are that still was a white piece of material. They just sublimated the green background on it too. So this is a way to take your embroidery technology and for very little money, you can buy material that we sell at colemanandcompany.com, our patch material or our twill material. You can sublimate onto that material with the sawgrass printer mentioned by Jim. uh, And then you can applique that onto a hat. And that specifically 
because when you're doing a big logo, right, like Mark's um, Coldesi logo on his shirt that everybody can see right there, that embroiders beautifully. We also have a tagline that says achieving dreams together. That font is particularly small. It's harder to embroider on that. And on a shirt, you probably just wouldn't want to do it. It just, it just never looks as nice. Uh, but theoretically, that could have been sublimated on underneath it, especially if he was wearing a light colored garment. So there's a really great opportunity to not just make t-shirts if you have an embroidery machine, but to take sublimation, combine it with your embroidery and do something that honestly, a lot of your competition is not going to attempt to do, learn to do, or, um, or maybe even have the guts to do. Yeah. <laughs> Good That's one. for sure. There, there's quite a bit out there. You just have to really take your time and experiment and be creative and you'll come up with things that uh, are just not out there. You know, you can really push forward and create these things, you know, when you have all the, 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 uh, the tools at your disposal. So, so Jim, is, is there something right now that's particularly hot in the sublimation um, marketplace? Like as far as I'm, I mean, usually other than vapor apparel, people are sublimating mugs and koozies and all that stuff. What's, what's, what's going on right now? People, you know, what happens is people like mugs. You know, mugs are really a very, very popular type of product because it's a product that everybody can use. Everybody likes to have, you know, you can, people are decorating, they're selling onesies, you know, at a, one at a time, two at a time, or they're selling, you know, cases, 36, a hundred, you know, whatever to big corporate uh, events, things like that, you know, co companies that want to hand them out during the holidays. I'll tell you a funny story. We had a customer that was, uh, he had a embroidery kiosk and he was doing hats, strictly hats. And then we talked to him about sublimation and it was because the equipment is, is small and it's manageable in a kiosk environment, he started doing mugs. And all of a sudden mugs became a big part of his business. And, cool. uh, you know, it just kind of grew into something that he didn't expect. And because of that, he was able to open up another kiosk in another mall and work his way through uh, the process. So, you know, mugs are really very popular. People like mugs. You know, of course, uh, you know, mouse pads are popular. You got to keep in mind that people are buying these things. A lot of people buy them because they want to hand them out. You know, they want to give yeah. them, uh, you know, as ad prom uh, promotional products, ad specialties. So companies are buying them that way. And then because it is a uh, print on demand type of technology, uh, decorators have the ability to do custom one ups for customers. So, you know, maybe not so much with a uh, with a mouse pad, but things like mugs. Of course, the clothing is very popular. Uh, a company called Unisub very popular with, uh, you know, sublimation. They make plaques, they make photo panels, uh, very, very big for photographers, for artists. You know, there, there came a time when uh, artists and photographers were coming in and they're saying, you know, I used to sell my canvas, my artwork and my photography on canvas, but it, it just didn't work. I couldn't get the money any longer. You know, people didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on these items, you know, my original prints and my original uh, paintings. So I needed something to kind of, uh, I needed another uh, product that I could put these on there. And they discovered yeah. products like aluminum, uh, sublimation on aluminum, sublimation on wood, sublimation on plastic, things like that. So it really, again, it opens up the doors for a lot of different products for people to just push their work out that way. Yeah. That, and, that, seems like, that seems like a good way to get started too, is just, you know, maybe it's not what products are hot, but what niche is hot or what niche is appropriate for your business. I used to try, uh, before everybody was in a lockdown state, uh, I used to go to a lot of the, uh, the, the, the festivals and the craft shows, and I would walk from booth to booth and I could tell when an artist or a photographer had product there and I would see, Hey, is this sublimated? Uh, yes. I, uh, how do you do that? You know, uh, well, I'm outsourcing it right now. Well, would you like to, uh, you know, do it yourself? You know, which, you, what do you mean? And all of a sudden you open the door for a big conversation. And the next thing you know, uh, you're getting a call and they're interested in, in, doing that process rather than outsourcing it. Jim, you, you were, you were at that moment, you were the only door to door sublimation printer Salesman. salesperson <laughs> in the world. That was it. <laughs> yeah. 
for sure you know <laughs> it's, it, it's just it's you see it out there you see customers out there everybody you know they just take the time to figure out that this is how I want to be in, in this field you know this is what I want to make and they could they just go ahead and do it yeah. yeah. Well, well, Jim just made a bunch of friends out there with, uh, <laughs> with our customers saying, Hey, stop giving, stop selling stuff to people. Start buying it yourself. <laughs> Start making it yourself. Yeah, uh, no, but people are tired <laughs> of outsourcing, you know, they want to. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's true though. And uh, the thing is, is a lot of, a lot of folks listening to this and our customers that are embroiderers or, um, DTG printers, all that stuff are outsourcing some of this sublimation stuff, some of these promotional items. And one of the things that we, that we've talked a, a lot about is the more you can do in house, the, the more variety you can offer quick locally, same day, next day, or, or, or relatively quick. It's, it's really a growing business being able to offer things, um, you know, near me, um, same day, tonight, tomorrow, be able to have somebody who forgot to get a birthday present for somebody to be able to get custom, make them a mug or a t-shirt or something like that and deliver it yeah. to them the same or the next day is a growing business. Yeah. Uh, because if you want to order any of these things custom online, it's actually pretty slow. The large how the large houses and companies that do these things, it's usually a couple days in production because you got to get in line and then it's to be shipped and chances are it's not within a one day ship to you, you know, and then you're typically going to pay something for that shipping. You are paying for shipping, whether yeah. you are, whether it's a line item or not, right. You're paying for yeah. it in one way or another because the company has to be profitable. So if you have a, you can get into sublimation for really a very affordable cost um, for your, for business, especially. And now you can deliver that stuff right away. And what's good about these blanks is the t-shirts is always going to be hard, right? Cause you have small, medium, large, all that stuff. Um, and I, I am a proponent that you should keep some things in stock for that same day stuff. But when it comes to the mugs or mouse pads or, um, license plates, or you mentioned like the picture, um, things for printing pictures, things like that. These are blanks that you can keep a handful of in-house are the same size for everybody. And it's easy yeah. to make that on demand. It's also easy to add on to a sale. So you have a customer and maybe you make them one mug for free with their t-shirts and give it to them and then see how they react. How much are these? Oh, I can make them for X amount of dollars a piece. And, you know, if you want right now, if you got like, if, if you're going to, if you're going to be around it, you know, go get lunch, come back. I can have them done for you in an hour or I can have them done for you tomorrow. I'll drop them off on my way home tonight, um, you know, or just come back tomorrow and you can pick them up, stuff like that. So um, you can sell that stuff right away to your customers. You can get, you can get the impulse buy that is typically only found in retail stores. You can get that too with having a sublimation printer in house. Mark, Mark, I feel like we have some listeners out there that are just waiting for us to mention upselling in some way or another in every yeah. single podcast we do it. <laughs> and that's, uh, this is a great example. You know, I mean, it matters less what your competition is doing and how much, yeah. how much they're charging, the more unique you are, the more you can offer. So if you've got customers that are, are calling you, existing customers that are saying, you know, do you, can, do you make this fill in the blank? I mean, the answer is probably could be yes, 90% of the time if you buy a sublimation printer. Yeah, there's quite a bit, Mark, to, to print. And I always try to encourage customers. I say, don't be afraid. Look at everything that you can do. Don't be afraid to try it. Get, you know, the blanks are really inexpensive when you think about it. You know, a mug is $1.60. You know, uh, socks are $3. Another item might be $1.50. Bring in a, uh, a sampling of everything. And this way you'll, you'll figure out what works Put it, if you have a, uh, you know, a small brick and mortar shop, you know, put it on display. Customers yeah. will respond and you'll get to see uh, exactly what works uh, in your market. And, you know, if it's a matter that something sits there, that's okay. It just shows people what's available. And that's yeah. really the, the best thing because if you print it, somebody will buy it. 
<laughs> yeah. I actually yeah. like that a lot where you say you, you display it and show it off. And we talk about all the time doing the giveaways, um, you know, give somebody a, a koozie, give somebody a hat, give somebody a mug um, as when they're, when they buy some of your other items. Cause you mentioned like you figure what you said a mug was like a buck and a half. Yeah. And then what the print is maybe a quarter or something like that. Uh, a print would probably be a four by, yeah, you know, 30 cents for ink yeah. or something. So less than less paper than is six dollars. cents. Yeah. Less than two bucks. We can say to give somebody a sample. Um, yeah, we, it, it costs $2 to send a postcard in the mail to advertise to somebody. Right. So you've already got a customer. You can make them a mug for two bucks. It's part of your marketing budget that every order goes out with a $2 piece of marketing. It's a little bit of time for you, but if you got a good system set up, it's not that much time, especially if you're using your equipment all day, you know, all day doing orders and yeah. promo items and things like that. People appreciate it. Customers will appreciate it. You take the time, you show them. A lot of customers, I, you know what I used to do? Customers would come in, we'd show them all sorts of different products, and I would love to just print for them. Let me show you how this happens. Physically yeah. print a product. Do you have a picture on your phone? Text, e email mm -hmm. it to me. I would take a picture, print it out, and create something for them. And they would just be you know, so happy about it. And they would look at it and you can see the, uh, everything running through their head. So I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And, yeah. uh, you know, it works really well that way. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're buying something. Yeah. That's great. So, um, we're, we're, we've got a, a little bit of time left here. I want to make sure that we don't, you know, spend, spend all day with Jim cause we definitely could. Yeah. Um, it's a great topic. The one thing that I want to point out to everybody listening is, that you know, you're going to go to bestblanks.com mm -hmm. in order to look at these sublimation products and to talk to a professional who knows what they're talking about. On the cold SE side, I mean, you know who your reps are. You know everybody knows what they're doing. You'll get the same kind of um, level of knowledge over at Best Blanks. You, you you can't really right now talk to your cold SE account rep about sublimation stuff. That's what we have Best Blanks for is you know, if you wanna talk sublimation, if you wanna talk about um, sawgrass printers or any of the other products that they've got on their site that Cold Essie doesn't carry, like, like the Hicks heat presses or the Roland BN20, which is a nice, a nice little product. Um, sublimation inks and that, that vapor apparel, you know, for sublimation, you're gonna find all that on bestblanks.com and, and the people on that site really, really have it nailed down and can help you. You know, we have a, we have a team uh, of people. Uh, the Best Blanks team has a lot of experience. They've uh, been doing this probably uh, 10 years or more. So when you have that type of uh, experience, uh, there's a lot of answers to a lot of questions they can provide. So don't, you know, be afraid not to call in and ask questions. And uh, we're here to help. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. And I think every, everyone over there has been, everyone at Best Blanks has been with Best Blanks for more than 10 years, which is fantastic. It shows a lot about um, how much each of them care about their job, right? And about <laughs> what they do. And you probably have to like it a little bit too, you know, to stick around. So, um, and, and it, it helps when you have, when you have nice quality products, when your prices are fair, when you care about the customer, it makes for a, re a rewarding experience. And which is why um, we have a lot of the same culture at Coldesi as well. You have a lot of people who have been there for more than 10 years, you know, uh, five plus years, 15. I think we have some folks have been there more than 20 years. Yeah. Um, and it bet. shows a lot. It shows a lot. Um, now, a w one other thing I wanted to bring up, Jim, which is kind of, it's not quite sublimation, but um, you also offer um, some transfer products for just regular inkjet printers too. Is that right? Okay. That is correct. Uh, we have a, a selection of transfer paper. If you're not in the sublimation uh, field, uh, we have inkjet transfer paper uh, and we have uh, laser transfer paper. So depending upon which printers you're working with, we have a transfer paper for you. We have several papers to choose from. We carry our signature paper, which is our transfer jet plus paper comes in uh, two sizes, eight and a half by 11 and 11 by 17. Uh, it, it's really a good quality paper. If you're running uh, a standard inkjet printer, whether it's an Epson or an HP or something like that, an office printer all in one, th 
this would be a good paper for. You can just run it through there. And there's two types of papers for that. There's a paper for light shirts, light garments, whites and lights, or you have a paper uh, for darks. So there's two different type of uh, papers available depending upon what kind of garments you, you want to do. Uh, same thing with the laser paper. It's just a different type of paper with a different coating, more suitable to a uh, high temperature laser printer. And there's paper for light shirts, lights and whites, and then also, of course, uh, dark shirts. We have uh, made by Nina. You know, Nina is a very, very good manufacturer. You know, and so they make a, a, a nice selection of uh, paper for both type of applications, you know, which is really good. Yeah, and, so, and Coleman and Company sells a uh, an exo stencil paper, which is a uh, paper for um, print, screen printing paper uh, that's made by Nina as well. So um, I'm sure Jim probably has met some folks, but we've had folks from Nina come to our company. They um, they make some really great products too, and they're the whole. I mean, they. I'm pretty sure Nina owns forests that they use to harvest <laughs> the trees to make. Paper. They are a paper company. They are a paper. Yeah. Company. Yeah, they and I'm pretty sure that they, they call it from tree to tea or something like that, that they literally own and plant trees that are designed to make paper. So they're kind of, they, they're, this is, there's a sustainability to their business since they're growing trees to make for specific, they're not, they're not going to the rainforest, Maybe. I don't think, which okay, is kind of cool. No mahogany paper. That's yeah. great. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no zebra so, wood. <laughs> so Jim, can you tell us then, um, I think two things, two things we need to know here. So, because somebody is already going to have an inkjet paper and say, uh, inkjet printer or, or something like that and say, Oh, I like that idea. Can you tell us the, um, the pros and cons to why would you, if you have an inkjet printer, why would you bother to get a sublimation printer if there's transfer paper for both? Well, you know, there's two different applications here. The technology is, in, is entirely different. With regular transfer paper, whether it's laser or whether it is uh, inkjet, the product is kind of a, a, a topical application. In other words, you print on the transfer paper and then you press it onto the garment and an emulsion layer of the paper actually transfers onto the surface of the garment. So that's where you have people say, oh, I can, you know, it has a certain look, it has a certain feel to it. And, uh, you know, some people prefer that. Some people are okay, okay with that. And some people prefer something a little bit different. But it, that's, that's the way a regular transfer application would work, whether it's laser or it's, uh, you know, inkjet. Mm -hmm. the, one of the things that transfer paper, laser transfer paper does is they have a uh, product that's called self-weeding. This is where you can uh, print out on a laser uh, sheet, apply it to the shirt, peel it, and there's no emulsion layer on the shirt. Only the uh, a toner will uh, transfer onto the garment. So that, pr that eliminates the need to transfer or trim around the, uh, the image. Now the difference, why does somebody get into the, uh, the sublimation as opposed to the regular transfers is that the sublimation actually dies into the fibers. It dies into the fabric. There's no feel. It, it's totally smooth. It's clean. Uh, it's just a, a really different process. So if you're familiar with one and you want to see what sublimation can do for you, you know, that's, that's the way, that's what you're going to get out of sublimation. You know, you're going to get that really commercial feel. Yeah, I think that there's, a, there's um, and I'm just making an assumption here, so tell me if I'm right, Jim. But I would imagine that when the ink you buy for your HP printer, that was like $99, and then you go to Staples and you buy the ink, I imagine that ink is probably significantly more expensive than the sublimation ink you're buying. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you're going to be buying these small little cartridges that typically, you know, fit in an Epson or an HP print or something like that. And uh, you, if you're printing T-shirts, you're going to go through those inks pretty quickly. So it's going to be a process where you're going to constantly be replenishing your inks or having to do that. And at some point, you, might, you may have to decide, if, is this cost effective for me? However, with the sublimation uh, printers nowadays, the cartridges are large. They hold way more ink than uh, the other type of printers. And it's a, it's a lot more cost effective for you to work that way when you want to make garments. So, you know, there's a lot of cost benefits with sublimation that you're just not going to get in a, you know, regular inkjet type of application. All right, cool. good. And um, so I was... Um... 
well, we got, we have just a couple minutes left, but I wanted to maybe just do a quick um, differences between all the stuff we've talked about today. Um, and, and actually, Mark, I was thinking that, you know, we can really turn this into a great article or, or in, in, a, in a sheet, you know, or something online. But, yeah. but we've mentioned a lot of different technologies today. So I'm going to try to rattle off a few notes that I've made just so we can tell all the differences on this stuff, right? So um, we talked about DTG earlier, right? So that's direct to garment printing. Really, we're going to do that on 100% cotton t-shirts. 100% cotton are the most popular t-shirts out there. Um, most people prefer a cotton t-shirt you know, over a polyester teacher, just statistically. Um, mm -hmm. And you get that really, really high quality um, soft finish, you know, on a DTG. So that's a, that's what a DTG system is. It's a bit of an investment, but you are able to create really high quality prints on the most popular type of t-shirt out there. All right. So there's your DTG benefit um, uh, or the reason to buy a DTG. Then we, we also talked about the sublimation, right? Sublimation is, is becomes a part of the garment right? Um, and because of that, uh, it, it's, you do require a specific type of garment, a polyester garment. So you're going to be, you are going to be limited to the opposite side of what the DTG is mainly going to be doing. You're going to be doing just polyester. And really it's for lighter colored garments. So optimal is white, but you can do your lighter color, you know, um, yellows and pinks and things like that. And, and it comes out pretty good too, depending on what colors you're using. Um, you talked about the inkjet transfers and uh, inkjet transfers can go on light and darks, but as you mentioned, um, it's particularly expensive to print on um, and it goes on top with this emulsion. So your washability on that type of a thing is not going to be the same as you're going to get out of your sublimation and your DTG. Your cost of entry is really cheap because you're buying a, a printer that's like 60 bucks on Amazon, right? Um, yeah. But your overall cost and the quality of what you're making is not commercial, right? okay? Uh, and then you mentioned toner printing as well. So if you've got um, some sort of already a commercial toner that's a CMYK printer, you can print on some of your lights and darks. And, and there's some limitations to that because you don't have white, right? And then that's where we talk about our digital heat effects printers is they're toner printers, but they have white toner as well. and the white toner will allow you to, to have more versatility in that printing. So that's kind of a bit of everything we spoke about today. We also spoke about vinyl, right? Um, I find vinyl, um, uh, vinyl is one where you have individual colors that you cut out and then you apply to the t-shirts. So um, in, in the end, my kind of takeaway on this is sublimation is kind of um, something you probably should have in your business eventually. If you're going to grow your shop, to, to a, a degree, whether you're doing any of those other technologies mentioned or embroidery or sign making or anything like that, sublimation system is a modest investment for a business. Um, you can, and you can make a lot of money out of it and you can on-demand print pretty easily. It's one of those things where you should just have it no matter yeah. what you're doing. It's, it's, it's kind of like a cutter. I, a I, cutter I, too. I agree. Both I agree. of them. Yeah. yeah. You, eventually you should have a cutter, a sublimation printer, and whatever else you do as the main portion of your business um, if, if you do have larger equipment. Yeah, and I, I will also add that, um, that it's just one of, it's one of the fundamental things in business. The more that you can say yes to a customer, the longer they'll be with you and the more they'll spend. So you can yeah, look at um, you can look at sublimation as a modest way to say yes again, and uh, it'll it'll make you money. Yeah, it, it definitely will. It's something that you really should uh, consider uh, getting if you don't have it, and if you do have it, you should see how uh, better you can uh, utilize it uh, in your business because there's right. a lot there. Now, Mark, I've got I've got homework. Uh -oh. I would just like um, everybody to go to bestblanks.com if you haven't been there yet. And, uh, and shop around and chat with somebody um, on the website about um, what it would be like to add sublimation to, to what you're already doing. Yeah, okay. yeah, and absolutely consider it. Mm -hmm. um, educate yourself about it. And we always say the same thing, you know, at, um, at Cold SE too. Um, picking up the phone and calling or, or chatting or emailing with our crew to ask questions, to educate yourself 
even if you're not, maybe you're, maybe you're not in the buying mode right now. You know, maybe you're still in discovery mode, but, but the job of our team is not just to facilitate the transaction, but to help you, to help you with that discovery. So if you hear this and you say, you know what, maybe, maybe this is good for my 2021 plans or whatever it might be. You're just exploring, talk to Jim and the crew at Best Blanks, learn about it, make some notes, understand what you'd want. And then when you're ready to make the, the decision, they're going to, they'll be there to facilitate the order. You're not, you're not, you're not hurting anybody's time. They get paid to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. Jim, thanks for your time today. We really appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure, Mark. We're happy to be here and uh, offer uh, an insight on sublimation. Cool. This has been uh, Mark Stevenson from Coldesi. And Mark Vila. I'm from Coleman and Company today, if you're looking at my shirt. I am. That's why I said that. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys have a good business. Thanks for listening. Thank you.